I'd like to show you some examples of uh, physical and chemical weathering uh, with the same type of rock. So this is a photo, shows an example of physical weathering. And um, the bedrock itself is a schist. It's from New Zealand, the South Island. And it's a metamorphosed sedimentary rock. And schist has uh, cleavage planes in it, and those cleavage planes tend to break very easily. And so in this particular case, we uh, had these flat surfaces in here are the surfaces of some of those cleavage planes. And there's a, a trail uh, here that I was walking on, and the trail had cut into some of the, the schist and these big uh, pieces were broken off. Okay. And so you can see that there are lots of plants around, um, but when I looked at this rock uh, close up, it had essentially the same mineralogy. These blocks had the mineralogy of the schist. It had the biotite and the feldspars and quartz and all those things um, that are in the parent bedrock. And so, in the case of the physical weathering, it was just uh, breaking the blocks up, um, but not actually altering uh, their chemistry. So in terms of the processes that influenced the physical weathering, I think a lot of it was uh, water uh, flowing in between these cracks. I don't see any evidence of roots in them right here, but over here you can see some roots sticking out. So I think plant roots can help with that, that physical weathering process. And then because the dip of the cleavage of the schist uh, made it so that there was a weak plane that allowed gravity, uh, the weak plane allowed gravity to uh, pull these uh, blocks down. These two images are along the same trail. And uh, they show examples of chemical weathering. And the chemical weathering changes the composition of the minerals uh, themselves. So this one has, and you can see it's a lot of water, and it was actually uh, pouring rain for a part of my hike there. Um, and that water is filtering in. Um, uh, under all the plants here, and the plants are providing organic acids, and those acids uh, help uh, uh, dissolve the rock and alter it into uh, different minerals. So within the water, you have ions from the reactions of the water and or acids and rocks. And then this brown is a lot of uh, clay minerals. There's still chunks of the schist here, so there's also physical weathering going on. Um, but when this area that's really wet dries out, uh, it's all powdery, uh, like the image here. And, and this, uh, the sediment here is a very, very fine grained and um, reflects those clay minerals. Uh, so we have possibly the dissolution of some minerals, but in general, we have the alteration of the schist. to clay plus likely some quartz uh, from the original schist which doesn't alter very easily at all. And I should note that the, the red color here is probably uh, from iron oxides. Thanks for watching.